our next speaker, Steffi Rushi. Steffi is the Joint Managing Director and Director of Healthcare at Say Communications. Steffi heads Say's healthcare practice and provides strategic marketing and communications advice for clients across the healthcare spectrum, including pharmaceuticals, OTC and functional foods, the NHS, and the voluntary sector. Her experience spans international and domestic communication programs. She has a particular interest in bringing not-for-profit and commercial organizations together to optimize the use of resources to advance research, education, and awareness. She is actively involved in rare diseases and other challenging health environments where greater awareness and education are critically needed. Thank you. Working with media, I usually work with media rather than talk about it. But um, here I am. And I just thought, just to make the most of our time, um, I would like to focus on four important fundamentals when, when it comes to engaging with media. First of all, let's look at what makes a, a good story, a good news story. Then let's talk about how we can understand the media better which is what leads us to then targeting the media more specifically, more accurately. And finally, um, how to become a go-to organisation for the media. Um, if you are a small group and if you are the only group representing a certain um, patient population, it might be easier, but it's still very challenging to be seen and to be sort of visible out there. So I hope the plan works for you and works for you. Um, I just wanted to um, sort of uh, intro thinking about um, the fact that healthcare generally and health issues, health news, make the headlines easily every day of the week. Um, but I think what we've noticed um, is that actually rare diseases are getting a growing share of those headlines. You know, they're getting in the media in all aspects of the media. This is a you know, fabulous. Um, example, you know, something that happened last year, summer 14, you know, the ice bucket challenge uh, was an online sort of initiative to raise awareness, to raise funding for modern neural disease, and it went like wildfire. It was everywhere, and then it became a sort of a story that really uh, landed lots of space in the traditional media as well. But there's other examples, for example, around the same time, we were essentially, we saw this story unfold before our eyes in, in the traditional media and also in social media. And it was, uh, it was, it was a new story, but a story that really um, sort of raised in the importance of access to treatment. So there was, a, there was an opportunity to leverage the story to talk about the meaning and the impact. And there's other story. Stories. For example, there was um, earlier this year there was a story around IVF, uh, new IVF technology that really led the story in a different direction. You know, focusing on who might benefit, what would be the ethical issues around it, etc., etc., and, and so on and so forth. So human interest stories make the page. It, sometimes it's uh, the online version of a, a, a national paper. They're still making space. Um, patient advocacy, access to care specifically, um, these are issues that are relevant, that are important, that are sort of of interest to the wider audience. And, and fundraising, fundraising challenges as well, they may not make the national paper, but they make the, the local paper and they make the regional paper, so these are stories that have traction. And they've all happened, and there's many more. So, the question is, you know, some of these stories are sort of proactively generated, and there's PR behind them. Some are not. Some are just about leveraging what's going on in the environment, leveraging the news, being ready to sort of piggyback on things. So the question is, how do we get there? How do we do it? How do we do it well? And, and starting with, what are the challenges and what are the opportunities that present themselves to us as perhaps small groups, one man band, um, you know, representing very small uh, patient populations. And let's look at those challenges and opportunities. And 
I think the first challenge is noise. The first challenge is competition because healthcare, as we were saying, is relevant, important to everyone. Healthcare is always in the media and there's lots of health issues that are relevant, interesting, that sort of are potentially uh, sort of compelling issues. Um, everybody has a, has a voice, everybody wants a voice, and there's limited media space. Another challenge is the fact that the media generally have their own agenda. They, they are after the big story, the dramatic story, the story with controversy, and they usually cater to very specific demographics, very specific profiles, and they have to sort of uh, toe the line in terms of also their publications requirements. Um, another challenge uh, is size. We were saying size matters in the sense that small groups have fewer resources um, and it's hard to get a voice, to get heard, you know, when there are other players, other sort of voices that are bigger with more resources and more, more things to say, more resources to really say them with. There's also the issue of, of relevance. If you're small and represent small um, patient groups, how do you make those issues that are very specific, very narrow, how do you make them relevant to the wider public or to a greater number of people? Um, but the flip side is also that there are very great opportunities for organisations that are experts in their, in their own field. Uh, credibility, credible sources, credible expertise is in great demand. The voice of experts, the voice of healthcare professionals, the voice of patients, need to be heard and there is great demand in the media for these things so these are great assets and finally a final consideration timing timing is can be <coughs> both your your greatest enemy and your greatest friend everything is about timing everything is saying the right thing at the same at the right time everything is leveraging when something is happening but being quick with it you know sort of you know you know, being there when it, when it happens. So timing is also what sometimes um, makes you miss the chance to, to be covered and to be interviewed or to be sort of noticed. So with all of this in mind, what are the, what are the answers to these challenges? Are there any quick answers? Probably not, I would say. So the, 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 the real answer is in great preparation, knowing who you are, in treating the media with great respect. Um, so, but I have some answers for you. So, so, moving on, looking at those five sort of challenges and opportunities, I would say that the first step is really building what I call a compelling story. That's the only way you can actually break through the noise. Uh, with all the competition that we're talking about, if you, can't, if you craft a good story, if you craft your message in a compelling way, you'll get through. Knowing your media, knowing their agenda, and aligning your agenda to theirs is also a way to maximize your visibility. And uh, targeting the media for high impact and high relevance, and this means less is more sometimes, is what will make your resource go further. You can't have everything, so be choosy. Um, there's another point around positioning your organization as the expert, and this is the way to really build for the longer term. The engagement with the media cannot be the one-off. Uh, you need to build relationships. And the final point is be ready. Have your ducks in a row in terms of uh, you know being ready to jump if the opportunity arises. Be ready to recognise it and be ready to go with it. Um, so very well theoretically. So let's look at each of these points in sort of detail, so we can at least formulate some kind of tactical um, approach. So for point one, um, I would say that when it comes to building a compelling story. Um, you know, pitching a story successfully is all about alignment. So that means that you've got to think of things that sort of work together. Your story does not work in isolation. Your message, the news that you want to communicate, that you want to share, what's important to you, needs to also fit with what the media are thinking, what they want, how they do things, you know, their own agenda. 
And that needs to fit with what's in the environment, what, what's driving public consciousness, what's out there that can be either sort of contrasted or gone with. So all these things need to sort of fit together in some way. There has to be kind of a constant reference and linkage there. It's only when you align things that you'll have the greatest chance of a, of a story that has cut through, that has traction, that has resonance uh, with people. And th there are some sort of easy ways to think about um, triggers. You know, they, they, the media are very savvy and they know where to get information, they know where to get stories, they know where stories come from, let's say. Um, so there are some typical sort of triggers, you know, for example, you know, we were talking about um, technical and scientific breakthroughs, you know, new science, new drugs, you know, these are, these are worth, you know, stories, headlines. And um, campaign information needs and issues around access. You know, they will definitely be of interest, will definitely trigger media interest. Expert opinion, uh, particularly when it sort of uh, challenges the status quo, when it sort of makes you think about things differently. Um, case studies, uh, patient voice, the, the real experience. And, as much as we don't want to say that, you know, celebrity supporters, because they are in their own way sort of uh, able to connect people with, uh, with issues, you know, in, in, in natural ways. Um, nice guidelines, policy changes, these are things that are important, they are on the radar of writers, particularly health writers. And finally, awareness week, days, months, um, as, as much as we think, oh my God, you know, not another awareness day, you know, there's many, there's plenty out there, they still provide a focus for the media, sort of a reason to, to think about an issue, you know, once a year when, it, when, it's, when it's appropriate. But, all very well, how do you build a story that is compelling, you know, or rather, how do you know that your story has it? So let's look at some of the sort of critical questions that will help you build a story with all the right elements, with all the right factors. The first question, and you have to be honest and you have to be true, you know, is this new? What you want to say, what you want to communicate, does it have sort of newsworthiness? Is it going to change the status quo in any way? Is it going to bring some level of uh, disruption and change? And second to that, you know, if there is change, who, who will benefit? What, what will be the implications? Who will be the sort of, what will be the end result of that? Um, and does this issue, this news, in some way challenge what's around us, support some kind of greater public health push, or support some kind of direction that we are taking? as a country, as a nation, as a, as a sort of, a, you know, as a service. Um, and further to that, what is my evidence? You know, looking at what you're going to say, is it substantiated? Does it have weight? Does it have the weight of data? Does it have the weight of um, surveys, statistics? Does it have the weight, perhaps, of other, other NGOs or other so groups or healthcare professionals or clinicians supporting? Um, the message. Um, who stands behind it aside from your organization? Do you have any other sort of uh, um, partners, collaborators who can sort of join in in the message? Um, who's your target audience? Who's the story for? Who, who needs to know about this? And is the tone, is the, is the message right for, for those target audiences? And, and also, thinking about target audiences, do we have a clear call to action? So is there something for people to do? Are we clear about that? Even if it's just going to your website, checking something out, that's a call to action. Is that in our story? Is that in our message? And finally, what else can you pull together that will, make, that will support that story, that will make it more credible, more enduring, that will make it more exciting or interesting or simply more dramatic. 
you know, so we talked about the importance of having a spokesperson, you know, um, but also perhaps a case study substantiating it, thinking about a survey, thinking about a report, you know, is there something else that you can sort of pull together that gives it more, you know, there's another way to package information. Photography, video, we spoke earlier about the importance of uh, social media, how those channels are becoming more and more powerful, but they need content, and they need a certain type of content that can be shared. So the story is not just the story, it's how you package it, and what else you use to support it. And, sort of, and I want to move on now, we've talked about the story, but really we need to talk about the media, and we need to talk about the media, and I know that we all are sort of multiple users, I'm sure, and sort of, you know, it, I, I could say that probably each one of us is an expert, is an expert user of media. Um, but the media is still sort of a, this very daunting, this very sort of dynamic, constantly changing um, thing that um, is, is kind of, uh, is, is quite, it's quite compulsive and it's quite challenging at the same time. We're seeing uh, sort of traditional boundaries blur a little bit, you know, so with the, this social media is kind of getting everywhere and traditional media is changing and evolving. But it's still really important to think about media, not as one blog, this one thing, but as a very distinctive kind of set of different channels. So we are, um, each, each type of media, whether you're targeting professional um, um, media, whether you're targeting national media, whether you're targeting regional broadcast or print, um, each media, really each medium um, provides a different experience um, to the user and therefore it requires a different treatment. It requires content to be delivered in a different way. It also, it also requires stories to be told differently. So everything needs to be tailored and it's really important that when you start sort of thinking about how am I going to communicate and to, who am I going to communicate with, you really think about the types of media that are available. Um, and while it is essentially like a very daunting task, there are ways to sort of you know, narrow it down, look at the media and then sort of narrow it down to what really matters to you and what is relevant to your message. Um, for example, um, I think these are some of the questions, basic questions that you, you can ask yourself when you first start out, you know, you're thinking about event X or, you know, you have news to communicate. Really think about you know, who's your audience for this news? You know, is it lay or specialist audiences? Are there any other sort of demographics that will come into play that are relevant here? Um, is the story, how sensitive, time sensitive is the story? Is it the right now story, this minute, or will it have relevance if you sell it into sort of medium leads or long leads, you know, magazines that will appear three months from now? You know, will the story still be relevant, hold? Uh, and also, what, what is the sort of geographical scope? Is it a story that matters only locally, regionally? Is it a story that has a potential for the sort of national coverage or even beyond? Does it have relevance outside the UK? Um, where does it play best? You know, what is the nature of the story? Um, but also, how, how visual is it? Broadcast will need for it to be visual, to be to, to, to have something to see. Uh, print will will treat it differently. So, what is what is the sort of the range of your story? Can you do all of the channels, or is it sort of this best um, kind of channeled through one? Are we talking about the nature of the story, and then you know, are, are we talking about news? News? Are we talking about a piece that is more of an opinion piece? Are we talking more about something that needs? Um, reflection that may be more suited to an article, to a feature, um, or a special feature, or may, might it fit better in a letter to editor, for example. Um, and finally, who would be best within a, a magazine, within a newspaper, who would be best, the best champion for this story? Would it be somebody, you know, sort of a news editor? Would it be somebody who writes features? Would it be a freelancer who can pitch a story to many different editors or staff. 
Um, and also, what is the specific interest? Uh, you know, can we pitch it to somebody who only writes about science, or does the story have a broader appeal? So these are all questions that you can ask to sort of to really narrow down to a shorter list of titles of media that may be more relevant to your story and may give your story sort of the best treatment. And once we have thought about which media, we need to sort of zoom in even more and think about who specifically um, we need to map different uh, journalists, different reporters, different writers. Um, and I think, it, you know, there are, it, this, is, this is the homework, the hard work that you, you can't really get away from. Um, to get to know your media, you have to read your media, but then you have to sort of uh, do some research. You can use internet and search to um, identify specific people, to get to know them, to sort of know where they write, and, and know also, you know, to know their content details. Um, media databases are available that provide um, sort of target lists and also the feature, forward feature lists, etc. Social media, you can contact journalists direct and they, they are sort of cottoning on to the idea of you know, short pitches you know, via Twitter. That's perfectly fine. Um, so, in thinking about where to start as well, you know, start small, start local, because the local media are generally friendly, they want to know about you, they want to know about things that are happening in the local area. Try magazines if you have, they have the luxury of time, they're more able to listen, they love sort of personal stories. Only go to national media, broadcast or print, if you have the right sort of newsworthy story. Media assets, I'm sure there will be some discussion later about how, you know, sort of how to write the best press release, but I, all, I, all I want to say is that think about more than print. Think about different channels. So package your information so that you can give it to social media sites, you can give it to broadcast, you can give it to print, you can give it to a, a greater variety of different places. Um, Thinking about your organisation, how do you become the go-to um, sort of organisation for the media? I think it's the first step is really to be clear about who you are and what you can offer, uh, because you'd be very surprised at how little the media understand. You know what different patient groups do. So it's it's really important to be crystal clear. You know, are you are you there to you know support your patients? Do you, you know are you a sort of an advocate? You know, an advocacy group? Are you sort of focused on research? You know, what is it that you are focused on? And also, what can you offer? The greatest assets that you can offer um, is uh, you know access to patients, patient voices, access to specialist clinicians, but also access to your very expert opinion. So when there is an issue. And if somebody wants an opinion on that issue, can they come to you? So leverage your best assets, but also make sure that you yourself are visible and you can, so and you are ready uh, for contact. You know that your information online on the website is always accurate, and uh, and that you are sort of well networked. You know that you belong to wider groups, so that you're visible and you have a sort of critical mass. But also that you sign up to things like Ask Charity, where you can support. You know, you can you can submit some case studies and sort of, uh, and, and they help you sort of leverage and, and amplify your message. And finally, be ready to get involved. You know, if you want to support the media, you have to be ready, and you have to be ready to sort of act quickly. Um, so aside from the fact that you have to continue to read the media and build your databases. Um, you also have to be able to, you have to be proactive in being reactive. Piggy, you know, piggyback on issues where you think you can have a voice, where you think you can provide an, an expert opinion. And if a journalist friends with a request, you know, help them. And if you can't help them, say so, because they will respect you for it and they will continue to come back. Update your, your information always. And just maintain a bank of case studies that have not been used before. You know, this is this is what's in demand. You know, the sort of fresh voice. And finally, and I know I've run out of time completely. I want you to leave you with just sort of 
what not to do when you're engaging with the media is very important. Most cut the gun approach. Go on you, you you need to do your research. You need to know who you're targeting and why you're targeting them. Knowing personal emails. Not stalking journalists with lots of information, inappropriate information uh, at the wrong time of day. Uh, no attachments. Nobody wants them. Heavy emails, big no no. Um, don't call a journalist on the deadline, you'll never get a pleasant answer. Um, don't send a lot of press reads, nobody reads them, short to the point. If they want more, they'll come back for more. And, and don't not pick up the phone. They actually like to hear a voice, like to hear a proper pitch. So don't make your re relationship just an email relationship. And a few things that you should be doing, you should be aware of. Um, don't forget that journalists have an agenda. They like to dramatise, so be very vigilant. Um, case studies can fail you at the last minute. It is the nature of working with patients. Be targeted. No scattergun approach, as I said. Brief your spokespeople really well. Not because you they only you know because you need to tell them all to say, but limit yourself to three key messages. No more. Stick to it. Um, Pitch to news agencies if you have a big story because they will definitely amplify your message. Um, be careful, inaccurate reporting is rife. So whenever you get a chance, sort of make sure that you have a chance to read back what they've written. And if the journalists write something nice, don't forget to say thank you because they really appreciate that. And on that, this is me. So Thank you very much.